Yeah, well, I seen this lawyer the first time. I told him I wanted to just clear this up and make a deal you know, with the DA. He's like, well, we'll see what they got first, do this and that, and I'll be able to talk to you. He never even come over to talk to me. That's what lawyers get paid to do. Yeah, you know I mean, I'm like, he's dragging this shit, running this shit around. I'm not trying to run this shit around and drag this shit. I'm trying to get this shit over with as quick as possible. Yeah. Okay, uh, gentlemen, the recorder is on now, so everything in the room is Thank you, brother. Okay, Joe. All right. The first thing that we have to do is I have to get you to sign a form that gives us uh, permission to videotape your statement. And then I have to read this, so just bear with me, and then you're going to have to answer a couple questions, okay? Mm -hmm. I, Lieutenant Daryl Ryder of the Swidera Township Police Department, in the presence of Corporal Timothy Chateau and Joseph Miller, um, you, and you need to state your name, I'm sorry. Right. Joseph, Joseph D. Miller. Okay. Uh, understand that you're being video recorded. Right. Okay. You voluntarily consented and you understand that this interview is being audio recorded, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You have a constitutional right to remain silent and you need not talk to me if you do not wish to. You don't have to answer any of my questions. Do you understand that? Yes. Yeah. If you do talk to me, anything you might say can and will be used in a court against you. Do you understand that? Yes. Yeah. If you want a lawyer to be present now or at any time during this questioning, you have a right to have one to talk with before and during questioning. Do you understand this? Yes. Yeah. If you can't afford to pay a lawyer, the court will appoint one for you at no cost, and all questioning will stop until that lawyer has talked with you and is present. Do you understand that? Yes. Yeah. You can decide at any time not to answer any questions or make any statements. Do you understand this? Yes. Knowing these rights, do you wish to talk to me without the presence of a lawyer and answer my questions? Yes. I want to go a little bit further and make sure that this is clear for everyone. Right. Today, uh, when we picked you up to fingerprint you, right. um, did you approach myself and Corporal Chateau and tell us that you wanted to speak to us. Yes, I did. Can you say what you told us? Yes, I told you that I wanted to speak to you too about clearing this incident out with the victim's attorney, without an attorney, we to get through this process, so I get out of here and get this over with and give the victim's family peace of mind and, and to clear the record. Okay, do you understand were you made any promises in regards to speaking with us? No. Okay. And you've been fairly treated and you came here on your own free will and accord. Right. Yeah. You understand English and you clearly understand what we're saying and what we're talking about. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, that being said, um, we're going to talk about um, the incidents today that we're discussing or the incident that you just got charged with and that's the, the murder of uh, Ann Ward. Right. Kelly Van Ward. Ward. Right. And we're also going to talk about Jeanette Thompson. Right. Okay. So, do you have one that you prefer to talk about first, or? Uh, we can talk about um, Jeanette Thompson first, if you want. Okay. So that we're clear, um, Jeanette Thompson is a female that was found um, in Swatara Township in the landfill before Stephanie McDuffie and Selena Franklin. Right. It was actually the first body that was found back in, uh, I believe it was 90 or 91 that it was yeah. found. And at that time, Swatara Township Police arrested an individual by the name of Kelly for this homicide. Right. Um, afterwards, there was DNA evidence that came out that showed that your DNA right. was inside Jeanette Thompson. Right. And 
we believe that you murdered Jeanette Thompson and placed her in the landfill. Right. Can you tell us how that crime occurred? Yeah. Um, I mean, I met her one night in the Uptown Bar. Well, actually, it was it was a bar in Stilton that I met her. And Do you remember, Joey, what year that was, or, or around month or day, or is that too long ago? Um, it's been a long time. My memory ain't really that good, but it's, I know I met her in a bar. It was a Stilton bar across from the um, from the firehouse. There used to be a club over there. I forget the name of the club on Front Street. And from there we went out drinking and stuff. And then we went up to the by the landfill. And we kind of got, we, we had sex and stuff. And then we kind of got into an argument. And one thing led to another. And I ended up killing her. Now, when you said that you had sex, was it, were you paying for the sex? Was she a prostitute? No, actually it was consensual sex. Okay. What was the argument about? Um, it had something to do with something stupid over money. And I was, actually I was pretty wasted that night. And one thing led to another, she stacked me. And then I got pissed off, and I just hit her. I think it was I hit her with a with an old tire iron or something in the head. Was that something that you found there? Yeah, it was laying in the landfill. What happened when you hit her with the tire iron in the head? She just fell down. She didn't get back up. So then I figured. <laughs> She was dead, so I just dragged her body over by a lake bed and just covered it up with leaves and stuff. Now, I know from being involved in some of your incidents before that sometimes you would go back and you would visit the crime scene. Right. Um, with this, with her, did you ever go back to the to the scene at all where you had placed her body? No, I don't think I ever did go back. So, uh, I might have walked through just to see if, if, if the body was ever discovered or something. I think it was discovered, and I never went back again. When, when the body did get discovered and we ended up arresting Mr. Kelly for the case, were you aware of that? No, I wasn't even aware that someone was got arrested for it. When did you find that out? After I got arrested for, um, um, been so long. Clara Thompson? Uh, um, no, I think it was the one up by the uh, railroad in Harrisburg. Okay. When I got arrested and then Brennan questioned me about it and asked me about it. And then that's when I told Brennan about what happened. And then Brennan made the arrangements, I guess, to get this guy out of jail. And I didn't know that about it. I felt really bad about the guy being in jail for something that he didn't do. And I couldn't see someone sitting in jail for something they didn't do. Joey, after you killed uh, Miss Thompson, did you take any of her articles or any of her property with you? No. Is there anything else more about that incident with her that you'd like to tell us? Was there anybody with you when you committed that crime? There was a couple of us together, but I don't remember who they were, but they left, you know what I mean, that night. It was just me and her together then. Just you and her? Yeah. Did you initially... Well, actually, I left the bar with a couple other guys, and then we came back, and she was still there. And then she asked me if we wanted to go out and drink some more and stuff, and I said, yeah, we can, you know what I mean? And then we ended up... At the our township landfill afterwards. Did you know before you left with her that you were going to kill her? No, I didn't actually know that I was going to do that. It just ha happened. You know what I mean? It was a, a heat of the moment when she smacked me and she, I got pissed off after we had sex and stuff. And then she just. I forget what even we were arguing about. It had to do with money or something. And then she smacked me. And I got pissed off, and I just picked up the, the 
piece of metal object lying there on the ground, I picked it up and I hit her once in the head. How many times did you hit her, Joe? I think maybe two or three times. Did you hit her after she fell onto the ground? Yeah. Yeah. Was she crying or screaming or anything? No, actually she didn't scream or anything. But I guess she was unconscious, I guess. So you hit her a few times just to yeah, make sure she was dead? Yeah. So, and that's the basically all I remember about that one. Did you drive to the landfill or walk? No, we drove to the landfill. In your car? Yeah. What kind of car was that? I had a uh, Ford, um, I think it was a Ford, I forget. Ford Mustang, I think. What color was it? Blue. When, when you placed her down in the landfill, um, is that why then you decided to place Selena Franklin and McDuff in the same area because it was? Well, I actually, Selena McDuff was the first one. I put in the landfill. Okay. And then it was Selena and then um it was Selena and then McDuffin. And then um uh, I think you forget her name. The other one. And then it was Anna Ward after. Well I think Anna Ward would have had to have been before because Anna well I'm not sure that how long Franklin and McDuffie were in the landfill, right. but Ann, you got released from, let, let's move to Ann Ward, right. we're done talking about uh, Thompson. Um, Ann got reported missing by her family in February of 86. You got out of jail in February of 86. Right. So that probably would have been one of your earlier ones. It's been so a long time of trying to remember everything, you know what I mean? That's well, tell me what you remember about Ann Ward, Kelly Ann Ward. I remember Ann Ward. Let, let's I'll make sure we're talking yeah. about the, the same person. This is... Yeah. I met Ann Ward up, uptown, on an uptown... I'm not familiar, too familiar with the area and stuff, but it was in the uptown area. Do you remember when that was that you met her? It was late at night, I know that. But do you remember what year roughly? Was it 86? Um, either 86 or the beginning of 87, I think it might have been. Okay. Where did you meet her at uptown? Uptown, um, it was a... I can't remember the area back there. It was... Like, was it at a bar or on the street? Yeah, it was a bar on the corner. It was, um... I remember it was late at night, I met her, and... Well, what happened after you met her? I, well, I, I met her, we hung out for a little bit, and then she wanted some money, so I went that night to my brother-in-law's house to try to get some money from her. And... She wanted money for sex? Yeah. Right. And my brother-in-law gave me, I borrowed like... Twenty twenty five dollars from my brother and all that night. Who's your brother in law? Uh, Dave Keller. Dave Keller? Yeah. Where did your brother in law live? Did you go to his house? Yeah, we went to his house. She was out in the car waiting while I went up to talk to him. Was that what car were you driving back then? Do you remember? It was, uh, blue, it was a blue Ford. Okay. And. So then I gave her the money, and then we went out, we partying a little more, and then we ended up at the landfill, and then we had sex, and then she wasn't satisfied with the money I gave her, and then she started talking about she wanted more money, and then I thought I didn't have any more, and then we got into a heated argument, and I was like, oh, and one thing led to another. We need to be a little bit more specific than that. Okay, well, I was like, I was already mad about the fact that she wanted more money after we agreed on, you know, the 25 that I already gave her. And, and she wanted more money, and she talked about she's going to have to call, tell the cop that I raped her and did this, did that. So, and then me already thinking, well, if the cops get involved with this, then they're going to think that, you know, me trying to get me for the other ones. And, 
So I was like, I had nothing else to lose. So then I just killed him. How did you kill her? It was a piece of pipe object. Was that the the piece of pipe that uh, Brennan showed you up at Smithfield? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, you said that this happened down in the landfill, but her body made it kind of around the corner right. there. How did that happen? I ended up moving the body there. You moved it there? Yeah. How did that But happen? I didn't want to leave the body in the same location. You know what I mean? Then they think that, you know what I mean? They try to throw that off track. You know what I mean? Like, if you leave bodies, you put bodies in the same area, and then they figure out, well, okay, this person did this, then, then that means they'll suspect that the person did that one. So I did try to, you know what I mean, try to switch it up a little bit. Did you do that right away, or did you go back later and move it? No, actually, I waited like a day or two before I moved the body. Late at, did you do it late at night? Yeah, it was at night time when I did it. I can't I'm trying to remember exactly how. We have all the clothing that... Um, I removed the clothing and dipped the clothing at the landfill. To try to get rid of any DNA evidence or... Um, were you aware when we found her body in 1997, did you hear anything about that? No, I wasn't aware of it. I know they said they found a body um, somewhere, but they, and then I never heard anything else about it. Well, you had mentioned something to me earlier that you found out then that somehow you believe you were related to Kelly Ward? Yeah, after after a while for my, um, my sister's I think it was my sister's, to one of her her former lovers or something, they had a child, and that was supposed, supposedly be her aunt, I think it was, and... Did you find that out after you found out they had reported her missing? Yeah. So then I was like, you know, they kind of started to take a toll on me. And I was like, I can't believe I did that. And I mean, Joey, how many times did you hit her with the pipe? Uh, a couple times, I think. Now, did she go to the? Did she fall down after you hit her the first time? No, actually, she didn't fall down the first time. So I hit her a couple more times. Where did you hit her? What part of her? In the head. And so I. And when she went down to the ground, did you hit her again? Once yeah, she a couple more times just to make sure she was dead. Yeah. Describe that as how you placed your body, where you placed it when you moved it. Uh, wow, that's, that's a long time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think I had a... When I put the body down, I, I think I made it face down and covered it up with, with a bunch of debris. We found uh, tires set up near the body. Did you set those up? Yeah, there was tires, yeah. Yeah, and a bunch of uh, like wood and, and debris and stuff. Why did you set the tires up there so you knew? Try to hide the body. Okay. Try to, you know what I mean? Figure man, nobody want to come to the, you know, the, the, the old tires and stuff. Did you go back and visit that body at all after you moved it from the landfill? Yeah, I did. Yeah, just to make sure no one found it. And apparently no one found it, so I figured, you know what I mean? Be well, interestingly enough, right after it was found, we got a report from a family down the road that they found a bone in their backyard. Did you move or throw any of those bones around? No, no, not that I can remember. Maybe it's while the animals got a hold of the bones and moved them or something. Okay. Um, Brennan had asked you when we talked up in Smithfield about she still had a watch on. Why did you take her watch? I didn't know she had a watch. Mm -hmm. When I told Brennan that, honestly, I didn't know that she had a watch. Like I said, we're just, you know what I mean, just, uh, drunk, you know what I mean, not really being, you know what I mean. Joey, did you kill all the girls in the landfill? 
Yeah. So you would be out with them, you'd meet them, be drinking and partying, and what, what would you tell them? Why, why would they think you were going, what were they thinking when you took them to the landfill? Um, they would actually thought we'd go to another bar. You know what I mean? But it wasn't a bar, it was just, you know what I mean, an old dump. At what point did any of the girls realize something was wrong? Did any of them say anything to you when you got there? Like, did they start to figure out something was wrong? No, actually they didn't say anything wrong, you know what I mean? But then, you know what I mean, after we were done, they got into heat argument about money-wise, and you know what I mean, I'm like, and now what we're going to do, you know what I mean? So, we get to arguing, you know what I mean? So, and, the reason they didn't question is it because you were going to be paying for sex, and that was a place you could take them to have sex right. where nobody would see. Yeah, where no one would see. So that's why they understood that it right. was okay. Right. All right. But basically, the whole part is that you know, what I mean, I had a bad experience with a prostitute that robbed me. You know, what I mean, and I just took it out on every prostitute, basically. You know, what I mean, figuring well, okay, they play dirty, so that I play dirty. You know, what I mean, I had a sex with a lot of prostitutes. A lot of them didn't. You know, what I mean agreed to what we agreed to and I let them go. You know what I mean? But then I had prostitutes that wanted more money and tried to scam me for more money, make threats. You know what I mean? And I was like, well, I'm not going to, you know what I mean? I got nothing out to lose. I mean, I figured one day I was going to get caught anyway, so what's, what was the difference? Yeah. Brenda did ask you about the statuettes that were found in your house. When the, what? the statuettes that were found in your house, there were seven of those, and we have seven victims right. here in Dauphin County. Was one for each victim? Yeah, I think it was like um, more like a spiritual thing. You know what I mean? To keep the because I used to have bad nightmares and stuff. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So I try to ward off the spirit. Oh, okay. So that's basically that's what that was. So I want to. Go down the list of the names that we know in Dauphin County, okay? And I want to make sure, while we're getting ahead of everything, that there's not anything else that we need to get cleared up right now. Right. So we have Selena Franklin and Stephanie McDuffie, and Jeanette Thompson and Ann Ward that you killed in the landfill. Right. That's four, correct? Right. Then you have Penny Woodward who survived the attack. In Perry County. In Perry County and Clara Johnson who survived the attack and in Susquehanna Kathy, Township. Right. And then we have Kathy Shank who was Phoenix Bell right. in Perry County. Right. Okay. And is that all your victims? That's it. That's all my victims. There ain't no other ones anywhere else. That's the only thing I did. And the, the commonality between all these is that they were all black girls from Harrisburg, usually around the uptown area. Right. Bigger girls that some of them were involved in prostitution. Right. right. Okay. Um, now, it has been rumored, and I want to talk to you about right. this, that there are some victims that you have in North Carolina when you went down to visit family members in North Carolina. Right. Is there any truth to that? No, there's no truth to that whatsoever. I've been to North Carolina a couple of times, you know what I mean, but the whole time that ever been to North Carolina, I never left. I used to go down on vacation with my family to visit her sister and stuff. We used to go down there, but the whole time I was down there, I never left my family's site. Did you did you have consensual sex with any prostitutes that no, you were there? Never. That there would be any reason any of your DNA would be anywhere near any of these girls? No, not, not so ever. So that's, you know what I mean, that's just a rumor that's not true. You know what I mean? And I was in North Carolina one time, on a run, I stayed with my sister-in-law, Diane, for two weeks while I was down there. She didn't know I was on the run at, at, at the time, but the whole time I was down there, that she was verified that I never left her house to go anywhere by myself. So there's no truth to any of that in North Carolina. That I had anything to do with any homicides or anything in North Carolina. And if I did, I would clear it up. Okay. Well, you did. You cleared right. this up, and yeah. one of the reasons that you said you did that was to help get the family right. closure. Let me ask you this, Joey. What do you think should happen to you for, for killing all these girls? I figured that, you know what I mean, I'm already doing life in prison. You know what I mean? What more, you know what I mean? It, it's time to clear up the whole situation. You know what I mean? That's what I wanted to do in the first place. 
But sometimes when you get attorneys involved, it kind of makes it more things more difficult. So what are you saying? Did you you're saying that you told your attorney you wanted to clear this up? Yeah, you know what I mean, just clear everything up. You know what I mean? But they're like, well, I was wait to see what they got. You know what I mean? But I knew in my heart, you know what I mean? What? And I figured it's time to do the right thing and get it over with. You know I mean? Joey, since we've been speaking, you're very articulate. You can tell you're you're intelligent. You know. And I just want to make sure for the record that there's never a question down the road regarding your competence. Do you consider yourself mentally competent? Yeah, I consider myself mentally competent. And you consider I know right from wrong. And do you consider yourself competent enough to speak with Lieutenant Ryder and I about all these matters today? Yeah. Okay. And these details seem very clear. You know, you, you shared with me that this has been bothering you. Your conscience the older you get, the more your conscience bothers right. you. Obviously, having a statuette, you, you felt there were spirits or, or nightmares, and, and it, it's been working on you. And the facts you gave us seem very specific and clear. So just, right. you know, just to make sure, because we want to give the families the peace of mind, knowing that the, the matter well, is resolved. Well, I want the family to know that it was not in person. It just, the things that happened in my life that caused me to do the things that I did. You know what I mean? And I'm truly sorry for what I did to your daughter. You know what I mean? I didn't really mean to do what I did. But sometimes when you're drinking and you've got other problems in your life that lead to one thing leads to another and it's just one of those folks in the incidents that just happened. You know what I mean? But it was nothing personally. So yeah. Joey, all these facts are true, right? They're true that you gave Lieutenant Ryder and I today. None of this was made up to try to help you with something. No. You, you heard Lieutenant Ryder when he started the interview you know, we're, we can't force you, we're not forcing you right. to do any of this, and that's what I want to make sure it's perfectly right. clear that you're not making up this story. No, that, I'm not making up no stories or okay. anything to get anything special out of anything. Okay. I just want to clear the record up and get this out of the way. I don't want to come back, you know what I mean, another five or six years later, have to go through all this all over again. I just want to get it over with to, this, to rest once and for all. And Joe, I respect that, that you're willing to do that at this point. Uh, I do. I because I know for a fact how it is. I have daughters myself. I want one, one of my daughters coming up missing and not knowing where they're at or what happened to them. Well, you know what? You know why I know you're telling the truth there? Because I don't know if you read it in the probable cause affidavit, but after Detective Haney and I came up and talked to you at Smithfield the first time, you decided that it was time because you were getting older and having health problems that you confessed to your daughter Amanda, I believe it was, yeah. on the phone some of your crimes and right. I have those audio recordings right. of you telling her about yeah. that. So I believe you. I think in some way us coming up and talking to you about her sparked you deciding that you needed to get this cleared up because I think you felt guilty about right. this. Yeah. Well see, I didn't even know in the beginning that they ever, you know what I mean, what they were doing, you know what I mean? So I figured I'm already doing three light seconds now, so what, you know what I mean? They're just going to put it under the rug anyway. I figured, you know what I mean? But you, they you, eating at me. You considered talking that day, though, because you begged me to give the warden my card so you yeah. could call me. Yeah. But then you decided sometime in the in that yeah. in between not to speak about yeah. it. Yeah, because my lawyers advised me not to talk to you, you know what I mean? And that's what I was trying to tell you, too. That sometimes lawyers get involved and they make things more complicated, you know what I mean, when the person wants to try to do the right thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Regardless of what the DA may decide to do, you know what I mean? I know I cleared my conscience, you know what I mean, I tried to make things right. What know? would what would you feel though if out of this you telling us now that the district attorney decides they want to pursue the death penalty against you? I would be really disappointed that for him to get one to give me the death penalty. I, mean, I know I did some bad things in my life when I was younger, but I'm not the person that I was back then. I am a totally different person today. You know what I mean? We all make mistakes in our life, and sometimes it's towards me. I had a rough life growing up. I mean, I had terrible things happen to me as a kid, you know what I mean? And it just drives on with me. But I don't think the death penalty is, is the answer to the question. Yeah, so I hope to be able to consider this, you know what I mean, take into consideration that, you know what I mean, that I am willing to clear things up and just, you know what I mean, give me another like sentence and just be done with this. You know what I mean? 
I have to tell you, Joey, this interview with you has probably been one of the most intense things that I've been involved with because I was working the day that she was found. Okay. And I've always wondered what happened to her. And the first time that I came up and I talked to you, you made the statement to me, why would you care about this after all these years? Well, the reason that we cared about it after all these years is because she was a human being. I think you finally realize that now, and it means something to me that you're being a man and stepping up, and that you came to us to clear this up. We right. didn't ask you to do this interview today. Right. You asked us. Right. And that means something to me, and I believe everybody is capable of getting forgiveness. And, you know, I pray for your soul that you get the forgiveness that you ask yeah. for with your soul. That's all I ask for is VA just taking consideration that, you know what I mean? Just, you know what I mean? Trying to make things right. You know what I mean? That's what I'm trying to do is make things right. But at the same process, I don't want, you know what I mean, my daughter or, or my family to have to be suffering through to see, you know what I mean, something terrible happen to me. You know what I mean? Or be able to, or be given the death penalty, you know what I mean? Then go through the process, the legal process, all over again, you know what I mean? I just want to squash this and get it out of the way, you know what I mean? Well, Joe, you've taken a giant leap forward in doing, making things right today. Um, you certainly have. And just, just to reiterate, um, you voluntarily, in your own free will, spoke to us today, correct? Right. Although you originally had an attorney uh, at your your preliminary. Um, arraignment there you you chose to speak to us without an attorney today right you made that mentally competent choice today knowing that you had every option to have one you yeah. chose it on your own free will correct right. yeah okay. okay well then what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this up at this time um and all this says is joseph miller's interview is being concluded and the audio recording is being terminated on april 15th at and now it is 10:42 a.m. I just like you to sign that okay. right there. Ooh.